Hi, welcome to Japan by Food. I'm your host, Shizuka Anderson. Today I'm at the Otokoyama Honten Sake Brewery in Kisenuma, Miyagi Prefecture. This is one of the largest cities along the Sanliku coast of the Tohoku northwestern Japan region. And unfortunately, it was actually one of the cities that was most heavily hit by the tsunami and earthquake in March 2011. So the whole region along the coast was actually almost completely destroyed. Actually, I'm gonna say it was completely destroyed. And even this brewery was very close to being ravaged by the tsunami as the waves came actually within 10 meters of this very brewery. Miraculously, this brewery was untouched and they were able to go back to work the very next day, although their main office was flooded by the tsunami and they had to rebuild. 10 years later, the city has largely recovered. They've rebuilt many houses, many buildings, although it's a long process and you can see walking around the area that they're still in the process of rebuilding but with a, a wonderful sense of community this this city has come together and this very sake brewery actually has an Eat Meat Japan award-winning sake experience which involves a tour of the sake brewery and then bottling and packaging your very own sake and then maturing it under the sea for about a year, a year and a half. And our very own team has actually done that experience last year. So today I'm gonna go back to the port where they have buried or submerged their bottles of sake and I'm gonna go retrieve that and see if there's some little messages left on it for me. But without further ado, this is gonna be a really great sake experience. So let's go explore the sake brewery. I'm Hiroki Sugawara, fifth generation of Otokoyama Honten uh, Sake Brewery. Oh, great! Nice to meet you! Nice to meet you too. So today, uh, I'm gonna guide inside of the brewery around the process of sake making. Okay, and then after, we're going to go find a bottle of sake under the sea? Yes, exactly. Oh, that sounds amazing. So this brewery started in 1912, so <gasps> this year is uh, 109th year. And some of the exterior, is it kind of original? Yes, yes. Uh, so this building used to be like the place for making miso or soy sauce. <gasps> I see, I see. So, 109 years ago, the founder bought this building and like made renovation for making sake. After washing, we take the rice with like this kind of small bags. When we use a big box like this, mm -hmm. it might make the difference of how much the rice absorbs the water. So this first step is really important yes. to make a good sake. When we make like expensive sake, such as the daiginjo or jume daiginjo, mm -hmm. we use this kind of stuff. So we reap the rice until next morning. Then, in the morning, we're gonna steam the rice with like this uh, equipment. And so this vapor is is quite hot, mm -hmm. like 150 degrees Celsius. Wow! Sometimes we use this big yellow machine. This one? Yeah. So we put the rice from here and the rice uh, will go through this conveyor. <gasps> then uh, the wind uh, will blow the rice and, and make it cool. And make it cool. Yeah. Do you have like a big fan or something? Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, okay. So this, um, this is generating energy and then blowing the air yeah. through a pipe. Yeah. When we make the expensive sake, jume daiginjo, daiginjo, uh, we use this because it's uh, easier to control the temperature. Next process is koji making. And we have the koji room on the second floor. After cooling, we bring the rice into this room mm -hmm. and so we have to put the koji mold it's on the rice. Okay. Okay, after our koji making, we have to make shubo. It's like it's called yeast mash. It's like mm. a yeast, yeast starter. Shubo means like ma the mother of sake. Mm. So when we make shubo, we use like this 
size of tank. It's not like a such big tank. Mm -hmm. In this tank, we uh, put rice, rice koji, mm -hmm. and yeast, Ooh. and water, and uh, lactic acid. Oh, okay. And after that, we have to move this yeast starter to like this size of bigger tank. Oh, I see. Ooh. Wow, it feels, <laughs> you can feel a lot of history <laughs> up here. Wow, this feels very traditional. Yeah, very traditional and like sake brewery. <laughs> Is this basically how it was even 100 years ago? Yes. So what exactly is moromi? <laughs> so moromi is uh, called unrefined sake or mash in English. Firstly, we put the shubo mm -hmm. into this tank and we put, we add some rice, rice koji, water. So it takes four days. Wow, that is really, really cool. So what happens after the moromi? So after the moromi, I mean, it takes uh, three weeks to four weeks. And after this, we have to press this moromi to make sake. We press it and maybe strain. Yeah, like sque uh, squeeze, yeah, kind of squeeze, yes. Okay, um, and where do you do that? So there's a pressing room over there. Wow! This is a pressing machine. Yeah. How does it press the sake or the moromi? Yes, yeah, so we put moromi into this machine from here. So this is like uh, a kind of cotton bags. Kind of. Cotton bags, okay. <laughs> it's really a process of like straining the moromi, which is a mixture of rice and then yeah. alcohol and then just separating the rice portion and the alcohol. Yeah, exactly. So the alcohol, where does the alcohol come out of? The sake will come out from here. So it goes out, the actual sake goes out of this tube. Yeah. And then you put it in a bottle? Uh, no, uh, <laughs> we use like just another tank. Oh, cool. Can we see that tank where the sake goes into? Oh, yeah. So we've actually just come back around, but this is where you keep the finished sake. Yes. Oh my goodness. So this sake is waiting like final process. How do you actually bottle? Do you connect like a pipe? Oh, we send like a uh, bottling machine. Uh, we send sake to a like, bottling machine to another building. Oh, very interesting. Yeah. Wow, so basically that's the whole process of sake making. Um, it was a little bit of a brief tour of the place, but we could see all of the steps. And it's really cool to see the combination of traditional methods of sake making and modern day technology. Yeah. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. But how was this sake brewery affected by the tsunami in 2011? Uh, yeah, this building, this brewery itself, was not damaged by tsunami and earthquake. We used to have like headquarter building, but this building was totally destroyed. Oh my goodness! The third floor was left at the exact same place. This only the third floor. Yeah. <laughs> Oh wow, this is actually amazing that the top part is still <laughs> intact. Yeah. Um, this brewery work is slightly higher price than this headquarter. I see. So that's why uh, our brewery itself was safe. On the day of the tsunami, were there people yes. working in this yeah. brewery? To produce sake. Wow. And everybody was, was yeah, fine every, in yeah, yeah. here. That is really, really very lucky. And were you able to start business again, right, like pretty quickly? Yeah, just after uh, the day, 3-11. The yeah, next we, day? Yeah, the next day we started to make sake. Many people gave us so many kinds of support. Oh. So like we have to reward them. We, we have to give, uh, give them back something, right. he thought. So that's why he decided to we start uh, producing sake. People who support us said, like, we have to protect, keep 
the sake because Kesenuma had lost so many things.、Mm -hmm. So we have to keep what was left. Wow. Well, thank you so much for telling me a little bit about the background. Of this brewery, and thank you for the wonderful tour.、Oh, this was you're welcome. Thank, thank you. you. It was such、thank、a great experience.、Coming. Thank you. <laughs> But it's not over yet. So we still have one final step, which、yeah. is the maturing process of the sake, and they do that in a very unique way here, which is under the sea or in Kisanuma Bay. So let's head over there. Yeah, let's go. Let's go. <laughs> All right, we are now here. <laughs> we are. We took a 30 or 40 minute drive from the brewery, and we're now in a little town called Karakua, right along the sea. And we're gonna go hop on this boat. Yes. And then we're going to find the bottle that we actually submerged、yep. a year and a half ago. So we've got oyster farms over there, and in the oyster farm, you submerge the sake bottles. Yeah. Exactly. That is so cool. I've never heard of this type of experience before. <laughs> I'm super excited to get on the boat. And as you can see, it's a little windy and a little chilly, <laughs> but I think this is gonna be super fun. Let's go. Under the sea,、um, this is so crazy. It's like a little net, <laughs>、yeah. and then it's covered in all kinds of sea、mm -hmm. algae and seaweed, and little mollusks and things. <laughs> all kinds of shellfish are all sticking to this one, <laughs> this one rope. You can actually eat these oysters and drink sake when you get back to the shore. So let's go back to the shore and enjoy some fresh oysters and aged sake. sake. Okay, so we are now back on shore, and we are going to try our aged sake and compare it with a sake that has been aged in a refrigerator, which is kind of the normal style. And in addition to that, since we are collaborating with local oyster farmers, we also get to enjoy fresh, raw oysters. So this is the usual style. Let's give it a try! I'm so excited. <laughs> it looks so. Clear. Itadakimas. Mmm. It's sweet. It's very easy to drink. It doesn't have like a sharp, alcoholic kick to it. It's very, very smooth. Quite on the sweet side. A little bit of an acidic aftertaste, as you mentioned. So I know that this this is what the refrigerated version、yeah. tastes like. Let's try the aged sake under the sea and see how that differs. Itadakimas. Oh, that is so different. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie. I thought there wasn't gonna be that much of a difference. It tastes like a completely different sake.、Mm. My mind is blown. The only difference is that you put it under the water. That is, and the amount of time is the same. Yes, same. A, about one year and a half. Yes. That is so crazy. It tastes. I'm gonna say the the sweetness has faded a little bit. It's a little bit sharper now.、Um, I think a little bit more acidic as well. So it's almost there's some carbon dioxide in there that's、yeah. been released. That is so cool. It's become a much more complex flavor, and it's not as sweet. It's still very smooth and drinkable, but it's definitely more complex of a flavor profile. It's delicious. <laughs> well, this is such an incredible experience. I never imagined that I would be able to try sake that has been matured under the sea. I almost want to start singing when I say that, but it's been matured under the sea, and I didn't realize that it could affect the flavor of the sake so much. So this is a once-in-a-lifetime experience and tour. Thank you so much for today. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. It was such a pleasure, and you can do it all in English, so it's very 
traveler friendly. If you want to come and try this experience, you could actually check the links down below and you can join this very tour, see the very sake brewery that we went to today, his sake brewery, and then come out on the ship and collect your own oysters. And um, you can also submerge your very own sake and then come collect it a year later. So it's a very fun experience. Thank you again. Thank and you. Uh, we're going to enjoy our fresh oysters and continue drinking. So we'll see you guys in the next episode. Thank you so much. Bye-bye.